One fans, this is the Formula One News Hour. I'm your host, Jonathan Steele. It is great to be with you this week. And yes, we do have a Grand Prix. After last week's rain out in Amola, we are, we are really happy that um, the weather in uh, Monaco is beautiful. It's about 82 degrees, 83 degrees. So beautiful weather in that part of the world. If you've never been to Monaco, you should go. It is a gorgeous little country, uh, principality actually. It's not very large, but a lot of people uh, escaping taxes from all over the world, mainly the UK though, and some other places in Europe, they go there. Most of your Formula One drivers live there. So um, it is, uh, it's a great place. It's a great place to go. Uh, let's get, uh, let's get uh, our sponsorships Thanked uh, for this week, Thenology at Thenology.com, um, Give, Send, Go at Give, Send, Go.com. They're in the news uh, this week, big time uh, for uh, Mr. Penny, the, uh, the Marine that uh, came to the rescue of a number of folks on the train and then uh, his, uh, found himself being arrested uh, for a manslaughter, I believe it is. Uh, uh, some some serious crime of which he shouldn't be um, arrested at all, but uh, it's all politics right now. And so all of the, all of the um, uh, folks there, demonstrators in New York City demanding he be arrested. So of course, the woke um, district attorney uh, in New York City ran out and arrested him. But give, send, go. I think it is, uh, they've collected up to about two and a half, three million dollars from now. So he's going to have lots of money uh, to defend himself. And then, of course, lots of money uh, to make his life good afterwards. But anyway, that's givesendgo.com. Then we've got cloudhub.com and we've got momsforliberty.org. That's momsforliberty.org. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, another one that we're introducing this week. That is Reach CPAs in Austin, Texas. Uh, a nice little uh, um, uh, accounting firm um, that uh, that if you're in this area or even anywhere in the United States, it doesn't matter to, uh, in this in, in today's uh, world of of remote uh, business. Um, that's Reach.com. R e c h c o dot com. Com. Anyway, so let's get back to Formula One and let's get back to the news. Of course, the big news last week was Amola was rained out. <coughs> uh, during Amola, um, Mercedes were going to introduce uh, their, new, uh, their new upgrades uh, to their cars. Uh, they didn't get to do that, of course, because the riverbanks flooded, the, the track was flooded, and uh, hopefully all the folks there in Amola, they've all dried out now, and uh, things are getting pretty much back to normal. The good news is it's um, May 27th, and the Monaco Grand Prix is on, and uh, we've been watching, uh, or I've been watching, uh, I hope some of you have too, the free practice sessions. And of course, we are not seeing any surprises in the free practice sessions, other than we're seeing McLaren uh, up there in the, I think it's the fifth spot in, in terms of times right now. So um, so the Lando Norris McLaren is doing very well. Piastri is all the way down at the bottom, but you know the, 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 the free practice speeds and the race speeds, of course, are quite different. So it'll be interesting to see how McLaren does in the race tomorrow. Um, today, uh, we've got uh, qualifying starting here in about 10 minutes. Uh, we're going to be bringing that to you live, of course. But the surprise is uh, Mercedes uh, have, have offered up all of these uh, changes that were supposed to get them more speed. And in certain sectors of the track, we are seeing them, you know, getting up there with Red Bull. Most part, right now they're down there in terms of uh, in free practice speeds anyway, down there in sixth and eleventh position. So as, uh, as I said, the strange thing is Valtteri Bottas is also having a very good, um, a very good uh, practice times. Of course, Valtteri Bottas has done well at this track in the past. So we should expect him to see, to see him probably may make a podium uh, for Alfa Romeo. Let's keep our fingers crossed. 
But really, at the end of the day, I think it's going to be Red Bull 1 and 2 and Mercedes 3. And actually, um, the, no, sorry, not Mercedes 3, but Aston Martin 3. Um, uh, Fernando Alonso is looking really quick. And I wouldn't be surprised to maybe see him come in second. But right now, you know, Max Verstappen's got the fastest times in practice. Uh, I expect him to take pole today, but you never know. All, all things, you know, sudden things can happen. In the free practice sessions, we saw we saw the McLaren of uh, Hulkenberg uh, pulled to the side of the road and stopped because um, of an engine uh, of power. We don't call them engines anymore. We call them power plants because they're hybrid. Uh, we saw Yuki Tsunoda uh, whack out his car and have to change the transmission and a lot of other stuff. So pretty much doesn't matter where he qualifies. He's probably going to have, because he changed his transmission, going to have to start from the back of the pack. And strangely enough, we also saw Lewis Hamilton lose it and... Uh, uh, not do too much damage to his car, but uh, really strange where he lost it. It wasn't really that difficult to place on the track, but he did lose it and put it into the wall. Uh, at the, in, in, in fact, that's how free practice session number three ended. So anyway, we're about to get started here in about 10 minutes and, um, and we'll, we'll uh, get going on the qualifying sessions of today uh, in Monaco. If I didn't mention it, the weather's beautiful. It's about 82 degrees, 83 degrees there. So really nice weather for the south of France um, uh, or the Principality of Monaco, which is the south of France. Um, but um, anyway, uh, we should be in for a beautiful weekend of racing and let's hope it's competitive. Uh, the One of the problems for, Mo for Monaco is it's hard to pass on this track and uh, usually the guys that uh, start at the front end up winning um, last year um, it was uh, it was um, Checo Perez uh, that ended up winning it um, the guy that's won it the most uh, strangely enough is a guy by the name of Ayrton Senna uh, back in the 90s um, he won it a total of six times and, uh, uh, and an, an, an amazing driver strangely enough um, Lewis Hamilton has only won it three times out of all of the world championships that he has uh, got to his name. He has only won Monaco three times. So anyway, we'll start uh, with the qualifying sessions here in just a few moments. So Formula One fans, uh, qualifying is just about to get underway here at, um, I'm not there, I'm in Austin, Texas. But uh, I feel like I'm there. Um, we're about to get underway in, um, in Monaco. The track is 2.074 miles long. There are 19 turns on this track. And of course, it is through the streets of Monaco. And one of the really difficult parts of this track for them is they go through a tunnel. And as they come out the tunnel, which is artificially lit, then they come into the bright sunshine then it's very hard to, hard on the eyes and there's a turn almost immediately after they come out of the tunnel. So, and during the, the, the course, the time they're in the tunnel, they're going at the maximum speed they can on this track. So it's a very tricky track for the drivers. Um, uh, but, um, you know, these are, these are uh, guys that have been uh, driving these cars for a long time, some of them. Uh, Fernando Alonso is 41 years old, of course. Some, I would say the average age for the Formula One driver is probably in the middle, 20, middle to say 26, 27 years old. There's some uh, like Piastri that is 19 and 20, Yuki Tsunoda 19 and 20. Um, you've got Max Verstappen at 25, uh, going to be 26. Uh, George Russell at 23, so you get the picture. Most of them are young. Uh, you've got uh, Lewis Hamilton, who is 38 now, um, and uh, but but for the most part, a Formula One uh, uh, drivers, uh, it's it's a young man's sport because you have to be incredibly fit and you have to have uh, no fear of dying. Uh, it, it's a it's a interesting thing to say, but the minute you have any fear that you're going to die or you're going to be seriously injured, you cannot drive these cars anymore because that risk exists all of the time. So, um, as you can see, I listened to the race through, uh, through the headphones on my laptop and I watch it uh, on the TV uh, right behind the camera here. So, um, so I can get both, both perspectives of the race for you. I can get both, both the visual real-time feedback uh, coming to me and also the the real-time feedback of the uh, Sky Sports commentators, um, Croft, David Croft, 
um, and uh, his sidekicks. You've got uh, Ted Kravitz, uh, who does the pit work, and then you've got um, uh, a couple of the other guys. They kind of alternate uh, week to week, but uh, for the most part, uh, we, we see some of them uh, at the, coming out week after week after week. But um, we're about to get going, and uh, this, so this portion of the Formula One News Hour is brought to you by Phenology. Synology is a small data center and cloud provider in Austin, Texas. Um, it is where a lot of folks store their data. Just as I've mentioned many times before, these cars generated a tremendous amount of data uh, during, during the course of a race and practice, and, and the engineers use this data uh, to give feedback to the drivers and feedback to the engineers. Uh, themselves to make changes to the cars. So please, uh, if you've got uh, uh, private cloud, public cloud, co-location needs, or just plain storage needs, please think of the folks at Thenology. That is Thenology.com. Again, Thenology.com. Okay, so we are looking at a live shot from the helicopter right now, and it, as I said, a beautiful day uh, in Monaco. And uh, and depending on where you're from, it's Monaco or Monaco or Monaco. It, there's different pronunciations. Uh, most of us uh, say Monaco. Um, and um, so uh, it's, uh, it's, let's see, we're, we're about to get off on, and we're off. We're off on uh, the qualifying session number one. And um, it is 18 minutes long. And so the, at the end of this, Five cars will drop out, and the remaining uh, 15 cars will go to qualifying two, um, where five more cars will drop out, and will go for the final qualifying three. So the top 10 cars in the qualifying sessions uh, uh, compete for the pole position. And pole position uh, is important in a lot of Grand Prix, but this is probably one of those Grand Prix where pole position is absolutely crucial to um, winning the race. Uh, like I said, there's not a lot of places uh, on this uh, particular track to pass, um, and, uh, and, and they don't present, with, the places that there is to pass don't present themselves that often because um, of the design of the track. There's, you know, in two miles, there's 19 turns. Um, that's, number of turns is not that, that kind of out of the ordinary. It's the it's the width of the track. Remember, we're on street tra street uh, track uh, uh, on, on city streets, and so the the track itself is typically a couple of cars wide. You know, whereas a race a race track itself, you can get three abreast quite easily, uh, which gives the drivers more room to pass um, and less risky moves to pass as well. So. Um, we're going to see uh, some of the, the, they're out on what we call the outlaps right now. Uh, the outlaps, uh, uh, of course, are where they get the car feeling like they want it to feel. They get the tires up to temperatures. Um, as I've said before, they, while it's in the pit, they put the blankets on the tires. The tires are heated up um, because the hotter the tires, then the better the grip. Um, uh, but you can't have them too hot, of course, but uh, uh, because then you'll, your degradation sets in quickly. Uh, so the drivers have to do a good job of managing their tires. During this, this race, uh, this Grand Prix, tomorrow, we're, of course, um, the, the, it's going to probably be just a one-stop uh, one -stop race for most of, the, most of the drivers. So they're going to probably start on the soft or finish on the soft and maybe uh, go intermediate, intermediate uh, for the rest of the way. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, uh, of course, Red Bull has probably the best uh, strategist in the business right now. Um, uh, she she won uh, she won Engineer of the Year last year for her efforts uh, with um, with Max Verstappen's car. Uh, uh, she's quite a remarkable young lady. Talking of uh, strategists, uh, uh, one of the strategists for. The Williams uh, team is now working for Sky Sports as a commentator, so uh, she can give some really interesting insight uh, into what's going on in the minds of the team principals as they go through some of the, the different strategies of the race, you know, when they're going to change tires, you know, all, all the different things, where, where they want to position their car and what position they want to 
want to finish the race and of course for most of them it's really in the middle of the field they don't want to be at the back of the field for the for your top four or five cars the red bulls the ferraris and this year um the aston martins then of course um they uh, they want to be uh, a podium finish otherwise it is a uh, complete failure of, in their eyes uh, to the race so the uh, they finished their outlaps now we've got some times coming in and uh, max verstappen is just just crushing the field right now um it, he's going to set the time to beat and i think it's going to be around one minute and 11 seconds uh let's see uh he he just lost a little bit so 113 7 so that's not a particularly fast uh well although it is the fastest right now um we've got uh verstappen leclerc uh esteban Ocon uh in the alpine of Les perez uh, just come in so now all of a sudden we've got uh, the Red Bulls at one and two then Leclerc then Ocon and nice to see Lando Norris is uh, is up there today uh, he's in fifth position behind him comes George Russell Valtteri Bottas oh and there's a nice surprise both of the um, Haas cars are in the top 10 um, and so you've got Lewis Hamilton at number um, uh, at number 10 right now um, at the bottom of the at the bottom we've got uh, Logan Sargent Pierre Gasly in the other um, in the other uh, Alpine which is kind of a, a surprise and um, Esteban no not Esteban Alex Albon um, in the in the other Williams I I might have might misspoke when I said that Alex it's Esteban Alcon that is in the third no I'm sorry that's Alonso Alonso now uh, showing up in the third position okay so uh, we've got six minutes in here to the uh, qualifying session number one and um, wow that's really really interesting we've got <clears throat> the two the two red bulls uh, one and two and then we've got aston martin at three and four lance stroll has showed up in fourth position which is which is quite interesting um, then uh, we've got uh, Lando Norris has slipped down to number eight. Uh, so we've got more of the, as, as we go through here in the qualifying session, they are, um, they are coming up with different times. And what has happened here? Who is someone is off the track? We've got a yellow flag. It is Sergio Perez. Sergio Perez has brought out a yellow flag uh, just as Lando Norris and uh, Piastri in the McLarens um, have uh, have um, come in at number one and two at one thirteen. So that's nice to see. That's we have, maybe have got some nice surprises in store for us this week. Right now, uh, qualifying is red flagged uh, while they get uh, Sergio Perez's car off the track. Let's see if they can tell us exactly what happened here as you remember Perez won this race last year so that's not exactly how he wanted uh, wanted to start off his qualifying session because unless he can do something dramatic here um, uh, they've just been showing Adrian Newey uh, on the screen Adrian Newey is the brains uh, behind the uh, Red Bull design um, he, as an engineer, uh, has won more uh, Formula One races than just about any other uh, guy in the history of Formula One, including Williams, including uh, that's Frank Williams and, and, and Colin Chapman. Uh, of course, they were team principal. They owned the teams and built and created the team. Oh, they've just shown it. He just, he, just, he just came into the corner way, way too fast. And just had no control over the car. He turns the corner, the car doesn't turn because he's just going way too fast and slams into the wall. So his qualifying his session is done. So a bad start to the Monaco Grand Prix for um, um, Checo Perez. Yeah, yeah, he just he just totally lost it. He may have to have the transmission that he totally hit the rear the rear end of that car into the wall really hard. So he may have to put, have a transmission uh, put in, which would put him all the way into the back of the field, uh, along with uh, Yuki Tsunoda, who had to have his transmission replaced yesterday. So we're going to take a small break. Um, uh, thank, 
Thanks to uh, Thinology for this section of the Formula One News Hour, and we will be right back. Okay, and welcome back. And the cars are lining up for the beginning of qualifying session number two, which starts in about 10 12 seconds. This portion of the Formula One News Hour is brought to you by Richco, an accounting firm in Austin, Texas. Folks, if you've got a small business or you just you're, want your personal taxes done, um, you want a little audit done, you want some general bookkeeping done, please call our friends at reachco.com. That's reachco.com. And reach is spelled R-E-C-H. And then C-O, so that's reachco.com. And don't forget to tell them that you heard about them on the Formula One News Hour. And so we have 15 minutes of a qualifying session. Uh, number two just begun. And... Um, we got uh, both of the Ferraris uh, out there. They wanted. They got out early. We got Charles Leclerc out there. And of course, they're they're all on what we call the outlap right now to get the tires set in and um, get the um, get the cars prepared uh, for their qualifying laps. Uh, typically, the, the outlap is one lap. Uh, sometimes some of the cars will do two laps. Um, uh, the, as uh, the the team principal for Williams was just talking about. Uh, the, the fact, uh, uh, if you remember, I mentioned earlier that um, that uh, Lewis Hamilton had to go straight on be because he, he went into the turn too fast or, uh, or whatever. But he says sometimes the reason that they're doing that on these street courses, um, there is dirt that just blows in from, from everywhere, of course. That there is on, on racetracks as well, but more so on the street course because there's so many people out there and there's cars and trucks and all kinds of stuff. And so they just get more dirt on them, uh, and just the general type of dirt that you that you find on roads, uh, as opposed to what happens on race course on a race course itself. So he said that it's, you'll see the cars sometimes you think they're coming in uh, too hot into a turn, but in actual actuality, uh, what is going on um, is they they've lost the grip because of dirt on the track or stuff like that. So. Uh, Verstappen is now on a qualifying lap and he has uh, just turned in um, a, a fastest first sector time. Um, so uh, George Russell and, and uh, Lewis Hamilton are also on a qualifying lap. They are not making up any time uh, at all, um, according to what I'm seeing here on the screen. So that would tell me these guys, these, these whatever the, uh, whatever the, um, Whatever the changes, uh, 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 improvements they said they were bringing to these cars, it's just not happened. And uh, Max Verstappen has just turned in the fastest second uh, sector uh, of the of the track. So um, he is um, and now the third. So let's see where where is that? Well, they haven't put up the time yet, but they will in the south. One twelve point. No, that was Russell Hamilton. Let's see, Alonso. Sorry, they 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 are not uh, they're not showing me what I wanted to see here, but uh, they will in just a moment. But uh, the the Alonso uh, just turned in the fastest first sector, so he's made up some time um, on Max Verstappen. Uh, so let's see, Verstappen um, is uh, out in front right now, um, and uh, let's see, Alonso is second. And then the two Ferraris, um, and behind them the two Mercedes. Uh, what's interesting this year is that uh, George Russell has consistently outqualified his teammate um, Lewis Hamilton um, in, in the qualifying sessions this year. But here's some really interesting stuff. The two, this is really interesting. The two McLarens have just come in at sixth and seventh. Um, Alonso uh, now has come in third, which which pushed the two McLarens down. But um, the uh, you've got Alonso and Ocon in the Alpine uh, up there in third and fourth position. Alonso is not a surprise; he's been up there in the top three uh, every race this year. Um, but Ocon is a surprise, and it's surprising that the uh, that the Alpines are doing better than the Ferraris and the Mercedes. That's going to be really concerning. Uh, to Toto Wolff, the um, the team principal for Mercedes, that that you know these 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 cars like the Williams, not Williams, sorry, the the Alpines and um, and and uh, 
the, the uh, Alfa Romeo, some of these other teams, they, they're kind of considered the, the number two teams for the main teams. Um, and uh, Alpine is the number two team for um, Red Bull. So it's got to be concerning to Mercedes that the number two team of Red Bull is outperforming the number one team from Mercedes. Um, it's, just, it's just really mind-boggling. It's kind of baffling. Um, so with 10 minutes ago, uh, we got Verstappen still hanging on comfortably. He's only three thousandth of a second away from turning in a one minute, 11 second uh, lap. Um, so but I think uh, we can comfortably predict, unless, unless there's a major mishap, that Verstappen is going to win pole. And I would suggest that maybe Alonso is going to be up there again on the front row. If you remember last week, uh, not last week, the last race, uh, he was up there um, with um, Checo Perez. Um, but uh, so right now in the elimination zone, we've got Hamilton, Stroll, De Vries, Nicky Sonoda, and Alex Albon. Um, and uh, what's interesting is that the, the times for being knocked out of qualifying are now all of the most, not all, we've got a couple that, that are at 113, but most of them are in at the 112. Um, so uh, let's see, uh, George Russell, what happened there? Hamilton just pulled in. He's in ninth position that right now. Russell is in 11th position. So um, just, just crazy, crazy slow times for Mercedes. Uh, let's see, where are we for... Um, so we've, we've still got um, the McLarens at 7 and 8. So that's, that's really nice to see. If you remember the last, the first four races here, five races of the year, they've been down. They've, they haven't made it out of Q1. So um, it's nice to see they have made some improvements over the over the um, over the, the previous races uh, while they've had this time. And Nicky Sonoda has just had to go straight on because uh, he locked up his. In fact, his, his, he's got something wrong with the with the brake adjustment on his car. His left front wheel is, is not turning, and his right front wheel is turning freely. So something he needs to make some adjustments there um, on the dashboard, his steering wheel actually. Uh, to forgetting the brake differential right between left and right and front and back uh, so that he can alleviate that. But those tires will be ruined. Uh, so he'll have to come into the pits, which he's doing right now, uh, coming into the pits and getting a new set of tires, and those ones are done. But that the flat edge on that right, on, sorry, the left front tire will be so bad that uh, it's not usable. Um, once these tires get a flat edge on them, it's uh, obviously it's like you uh, the, the vibration... Uh, coming through the car is just unbearable. So uh, once once they get flat edges uh, on the tires, they're done. Um, it looks like Max Verstappen is. Uh, oh, he's just uh, he's just turning another fastest time. He is now um, in the 111. So he's the first one to come in at 111, just barely by about one tenth of a second. Um, and then Alonso is right behind him at 112, and probably two one thousandths of a second so he's just right outside it pierre gasly and esteban archon in the alpines are right there at three and four ahead of mercedes i'm sorry ahead of ferrari at five and six ahead of mclaren at six and seven and ahead of mercedes which is 10 and 11 right now okay with six minutes left uh, we've got the running the top five Verstappen Alonso Gasly Ocon and Carlos Sainz the, um, the the drivers in danger of not making it through are Russell Albon Stroll De Vries and Tsunoda um, so George Russell though has just turned in the fastest first sector time so that's interesting um, so we'll have to see uh, how uh, how he makes out. Uh, Carlos Sainz has added time. Um, let's see. Hamilton is Hamilton has added time. Uh, so the Mercedes really, uh, although Russell's just turned in a really nice time in the first sector, Mercedes are just struggling. Uh, there's just no other way to put it. So, um, so, but he just uh, he just he just lost. Russell just lost time in the second sector. 
So let's see where this is going to put him. We've got five minutes to go now in, uh, in qualifying session number two. Um, so uh, let's see. You know, George Russell's come in at, in number three, right behind Alonso. Um, so you remember early on, I said that Alonso might squeak out uh, a, a, a front row position again. This, this was early, early uh, here in the Formula One news hour. Um, and, uh, and right now he's sitting in, in position number two. Uh, but still, the, the Alpines are just, just doing some amazing stuff, both of them at fourth and fifth. Uh, what's strange is uh, Lance Stroll all the way down in 13. Uh, if you remember earlier, he was right behind his teammate, uh, uh, Alonso. So they're both out back out there again on an outlap. So let's see how they do. So, so I, I, I'm just listening, um, just listening to uh, the commentators, and uh, in particular, um, Martin Brundle talking about uh, Max Verstappen's slow time. Um, and, and actually, it was. I mean, right now he's uh, three tenths of a second uh, behind Alonso, which is, you know, that's quite a bit. Um, but uh, like I said. Uh, he's got it's we still got seven minutes left so we'll we'll see at least another two to three attempts uh, for him to make pole position it's taking them right up what one minute and let's say one make it easy one minute and 15 seconds from beginning to end uh, so we got uh, seven minutes so we easily got uh, uh, a chance here for three more attempts to get that pole position but right now uh, Fernando Alonso is in provisional pole and uh, he is the guy to beat um, and uh, let's see, Lando Norris, uh, they're just showing a picture. He is about to come out, so uh, they're taking the uh, heaters off the tires. And so Lando Norris is uh, ready to come back out of the pits. I guess they're just waiting for cars to get out of his way, and he's off. So Lando Norris then will have a outlap, uh, obviously, get his tires warmed up, get the car pre prepped, uh, see where he is. Uh, obviously, when you make any mechanical changes, which they've been doing, and they've got a new nose cone uh, on that car because, of course, uh, as I mentioned before, he wiped out the, the little vertical piece uh, on that sits on the edge. Uh, they literally sit straight up um, uh, on the edge. Uh, kind of like if you've flown a lot and you look out the window on the plane, uh, you'll see those little uh, air spoilers on the end of the wings. Um, that uh, are there on the, on the planes are actually out there designed to um, break up uh, the whirly birds that come off the end of those wings um, and uh, help with the aerodynamics a little bit. But also the biggest problem is those whirly birds. If you've ever been in a plane, and this would be 20 years ago because of those end pieces, it doesn't happen so much. But when they would get caught in the wake of a plane in front of them, it, it was, was serious uh, turbulence. Um, so. Um, Anyway, uh, Verstappen's out there and he is not making an impression um, on um, Lando, uh, like on, on Alonso's time at all. So um, his fastest, Alonso's 111, but he did turn in the fastest time as he now, and he has just taken over provisional pole. So he turned in a 111.6. So that pushed that pushed um, Alonso down into second. The two Ferraris third and fourth. Russell fifth, and then the um, Alpines. I'm sorry, yeah, the Alpines um, at six and seven. What's interesting is um, I expected uh, Valtteri Bottas to be up in qualifying in the top uh, in the top ten here, but uh, he he just didn't make it. Uh, he didn't actually make it out of Q1. So. Uh, and he was out yesterday and early this morning during free practice uh, number three. He was uh, he was turning in some really good times, you know, low one twelves. And uh, just talking now, Esteban Ocon, and uh, he has Esteban Ocon has just turned in a one eleven point three in the Alpine to take over provisional pole from from um, Max Verstappen. This is crazy stuff really crazy stuff it's really good stuff to see by the way because it's going to make for a really interesting race tomorrow when we see these other cars other than the dominant ones of course 
as I've mentioned before, there's a difference between a car in qualifying and a car in racing. And um, Red Bull so far during the races um, have just proved themselves to be a half, three quarters of a second per lap faster than any of the other cars on the track. But that's, that's an amazing result for Akon uh, because he, even if Verstappen, so they're, they're talking about uh, Ferrari in my head here, but um, Esteban Akon could well find himself uh, on the front row. And uh, Verstappen is on another outlap, so he's getting his car ready. Um, so we'll have to see how he does. Um, but it's just crazy what's going on right now. Um, Mercedes, uh, Hamilton's in fourth and Russell is in eighth. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Russell has really been outperforming his teammate this year in qualifying. And uh, Charles Leclerc has just turned in the fastest uh, section, fastest uh, first sector time. Um, so um, it's, it's going to be in interesting. And uh, that, we've got some really, really, so it's very difficult watching and, and listening at the same time. I kind of, uh, you know, when you're watching these newscasters and stuff on, on TV, they got people talking in their headphones all the time. So they got to listen and concentrate. So. Leclerc now is in provisional poll and he's turned in a 111.4. Last one minute to go in qualifying, and right now we've got Leclerc, Ocon, Sainz, Verstappen, Alonso. But uh, Alonso's just turned in the two fastest sessions. Alonso could end up pole position here. This is crazy. So it's going to be interesting to see what Verstappen does. It's Alonso now has provisional pole. He has just locked just knocked Leclerc down to second position, which Verstappen's down in fifth position all of a sudden. Um, really, really exciting, good stuff happening here at the Monaco Grand Prix, which uh, will send us out for a, an incredible race tomorrow. And Verstappen is out and he has not uh, made up any time on Alonso in the first sector. So he's got to really turn in a really fast second sector and a really fast third sector. So we'll see how he how he does here um so we've got uh, th this is his, this is it this is his last lap so um lando norris has made it made has made up one position he's up into ninth position now uh, russell is in eighth hamilton is sixth. so we're, we're still seeing mercedes in the and max verstappen has just taken pole position away from alonso but that's going to mean that my prediction at the beginning of this qualifying section of Verstappen Alonso front row is going to come off and be true. That is just some amazing driving from uh, Verstappen when it, when, it, when it was needed. And also just incredible stuff from Fernando Alonso. Um, and Esteban Ocon uh, at number four is just crazy. Uh, Hamilton at uh, number six, uh, Gasly number seven and Russell at number eight. Um, and then Lando Norris got b knocked back down. He's in the pits. Uh, so they, did, they just didn't get uh, where he wanted to be. So an incredible drive from Max Verstappen in the final minute of qualifying to take pole position at the Monaco Grand Prix tomorrow. And uh, just amazing stuff. We want to thank all of our sponsors for uh, bringing us the, uh, the, the, the qualifying a session for the Monaco Grand Prix uh, this morning. We're talking about Thenology at Thenology.com. We're talking about Moms for Liberty at MomsforLiberty.org, CloudHub at CloudHub.com, and GiveSendGo at GiveSendGo.com. And our new sponsor uh, for this week, uh, ReachCo at ReachCo.com. Thank you very much. We will be back. Uh, tomorrow for the race and of course we can't end any of our formula one news our sessions without thanking our producer and technical guru that makes 
all things look good that really aren't that good at times, Andre Kuhn. So a big shout out and thank you to Andre Kuhn. And we will see you tomorrow morning, uh, bright and early. The race starts at 8 a.m. Central Time here in the United States. And for all you Indy uh, car fans out there, of course, tomorrow is also the Indy 500, which I will be watching. I did get the opportunity to uh, meet and talk to um, last year's winner, Mr. Ericsson, a Swedish guy who used to be a Formula One driver and moved over uh, to IndyCar uh, some two or three years ago and ended up winning the Indy 500 last year. So until tomorrow, this is Jonathan Steele with the Formula One News Hour. Have a great rest of your day.